Welcome back to How to Program. Just a warning, this show is best viewed in order, and we recommend you start with the first episode, and you can go on our channel, and the first episode should be right there for you to start with. And this is episode number four, binary, and we're going to talk about binary and introduce that concept. So binary means relating to, or composed of, or involving two things. And in computer science, the two things are electricity, and whether it's flowing or it's not flowing. If electricity is flowing, then it's on, and if electricity is not flowing, then it's off. And inside a computer circuit, those are the two things we can sort of deal with, or the, the two states that we can have. Now let's talk a little bit about numbers and, and the word digit. And digit is just a single number symbol, um, like two, seven, nine, zero, one. All, all of these are digits. Uh, it's also, funny enough, uh, the word for a uh, finger or a thumb or a toe. And this comes from the fact that when you're counting, you usually start by using your fingers when you're little and you learn counting, right? You, you use your fingers. Now, I wanted to review a little bit uh, about powers, and you, you may or may not have learned a lot about powers and doing mathematics in your schooling. Um, a power is just a number multiplied by itself several times, and the way it's written is a, a number, uh, like 10, for example, and then another number that is um, higher to, to the right. So like this 2, so we would read this as 10 power 2, and the 2 means you multiply it twice by itself. So this would mean 10 times 10, right? There's 10 twice, uh, hence the 2. So that's 100. Or 10 power 3 would mean 10 multiplied by itself three times, or 10 times 10 times 10, which would be 1,000. Now, there's a couple of special powers. Uh, 10 power 1 just means 10 multiplied once, or just 10. So 10 power 1 is, is 10. Any number power 1 is just the number itself. And then 10 power 0, or any number power 0 really, would mean that number multiplied 0 times. And in mathematics, we have decided this, this is equal to 1. So any number power 0 is equal to 1. Now let's talk about counting for humans. Uh, humans count in tens. This is funny enough because we have ten fingers, and that's the origin of the word digit. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. As a result, there's ten possible symbols to represent a number for humans. Uh, it goes from zero to nine. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are the ten different symbols because, you know, it, it goes up to nine, but you include the zero that makes ten symbols um, that we use to count. Uh, counting starts at zero and goes up to nine. When you hit nine, you go back to zero, and then you add a one to the left, uh, and then start over, and then you go up, and so on. And then when you hit nine again, then you go to the next digit to the left, and so forth. And then if you hit like 99, and then both go to zero, and then you add another one to the left. So this is how counting works. I mean, this is this is kind of obvious, and, and you're kind of thinking right now, like, why is he telling me how to count? I've known this since I was a little kid. Yeah, I, I, that's fine, but this is important for later, so just bear with me. This is how you count, right? You have 10 symbols, and when you get to the last symbol, you go back to the first one, and then the symbol to the left goes to the next symbol, and so forth. This is called base 10 counting because there's 10 symbols, or decimal notation sometimes because deci is also um, uh, meaning 10 in this case, right? Um, so that's where that word comes from. Um, if we wanted to, we could add a bunch of zeros before a number. Uh, they would just mean zero, like they wouldn't change the number. So for example, the, word, the number one could be written as one or zero, zero, one or zero, one, right? Um, this would be read, um, as a one, but it would mean something interesting. And if you look, I, I made a little table. So um, the digit all the way to the right, um, in the case of zero, zero, 001, for example, um, is one multiplied by 10 power zero. And 10 power zero is just one. Now, um, the digit to the left of that, so zero, 01, so the zero on the left, would be zero times 10 power one, which is 10. So zero times 10. And the same for the one on the left. So this doesn't make really very much sense for zero, zero, 001 to say, okay, well, it's 0 times 100 plus 0 times 10 plus 1 times 1, which equals to 1. I mean, this, this doesn't really make sense, maybe. But if, if it was 601, it could be read as 6 times 100 plus 0 times 10 plus 1 times 1. And as you can see, hopefully, from that little table, as you go left, the digit gets multiplied by the next power of 10, 
right? So six is times 10 power two because it's two places to the left of the first digit, right? Uh, and so on. And so like a number like 12,400,127, uh, you know, it's one times 10 million, two times a million, four times 100,000. And all these, number gets, all these numbers, all these results get added together to form the whole number. And this is how you can sort of decompose or like take, take apart a particular number in base 10, right? And counting for humans. Um, so every digit to the left is multiplied by the next power of 10. This is how counting works when you have 10 symbols. Okay, hopefully you're following so far. Now, counting for computers. Computers, like I said, can only deal with two values, on and off. Hence, they can only count with two symbols. So arbitrarily, we decided to just use the first two symbols that we use for counting numbers, which are zero and one. Uh, counting starts at zero and then goes up to one. When you hit one, you go back to zero and you add a one to the left of zero. And every new digit represents to the left, represents how many of the next power of two the number contains because we have only two symbols. So instead of powers of 10 for humans, it's powers of two. And this is called base two counting or binary notation. So essentially, all the rules that I just explained for counting for humans apply to counting for binary, except we only have two symbols. Hopefully this is pretty simple. Um, let's look at the powers of two, just because it's a, a good idea to memorize the first 10 or 15 or so. I mean, you, you don't really need to know past the 10th or 15th power really that much. Um, it won't come in too handy, but it's good to know the first eight or nine just off the top of your head. So if you want to pause the video and just kind of get familiar or just, you know, look at it. I mean, it, it's, it's easy when you're dealing with binary math or dealing with any binary number to just be able to quickly do the conversion in your head. So this, this table can come in handy for that. Okay, binary numbers are usually, when you write them out, um, usually we write them in groups of four to make it easier to read because just a bunch of zeros and ones when those spaces, it just becomes very hard to sort of make out where am I, what number digit is this, and so on. So usually they're grouped in, in fours when you write them out, and then you put spaces between the groups of fours, like 1010 space 0010. Um, now let's count to 10 in binary. So you have 001, 0010, 0011. So as you can see, it's similar to counting for, for humans in base 10 or in decimal notation, except you know, every time we hit one, the next number just goes back to zero, and then we we, we take the number to the left of that and, and put it to the next digit and so on, right? So, you know, um, so, you know, three is zero, zero, one, one, four is zero, one, zero, zero, five is zero, one, zero, one, six is zero, one, one, zero, seven is zero, one, 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 eight is one, zero, 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 nine is one, zero, zero, one, and 10 is one, zero, one, zero. Okay. That's counting up to 10. Let's look at some example numbers in binary, and then I put their equivalent number in, in base 10 or in decimal human notation. Um, so I, I made this little table again. This should look familiar because it's the same table as the one before, except this time we have powers of two instead of powers of 10. So um, the number one, for example, is just a single one with a bunch of zeros left of it. That's pretty simple. Um, now the number three would be just one and one. And the way we would know that this is three, if you were looking at a binary number, um, you would just make a little table like this. This is how I do it when I'm presented with a binary number and I'm trying to count manually what it is. Um, you basically would just put a little, you know, just start going like, okay, the first digit is one. Okay, good. The next one is two. Okay, good. The next one is four. The next one is eight and so on. And anytime you had a one, you would add that power of two to the total to figure out what the number is in decimal. That's how the conversion works. And we'll actually do a full conversion here in a second, just to give you an example the other way around. But um, yeah, that's how that works. So as you can see with eight binary digits, uh, we can go all the way up to 255. If we added one to that number, then of course it would be a single one with eight zeros and that would be 256, but that wouldn't fit in eight uh, single digits anymore, right? So how do we convert the other way? I kind of explained here, you know, in this slide, you can see, okay, there's, um, you know, there's a table you can convert by just looking at the powers of two and then adding up the ones that are set to one. And then that gives you the total number. So this is how to go from binary 
back to decimal, right? Now, how do we go from decimal back to binary? Well, uh, let's convert 237 to binary. So the first thing you do is you try to find the highest power of two that is less than the number that you have. Uh, and in this case, it's 128, which is two power seven. So we take the eighth digit. This is one more. You can see the power is seven, but it's the eighth digit because remember, it starts at two power zero. It doesn't start at two power one. So if it's, you know, two power seven, that's the eighth digit, right? You can look at the table. Hopefully this makes sense. Pause the video to see that the two power seven is, is in the eighth box to the left. It's not in the, in the seventh box, right? So we said the eighth digit to be one in binary. So one and seven zeros to the right of that. Now we subtract 128 from 237 because now we have 128 set. So that we're done. So now we just need to represent the rest, which is 109. That's what's left over, right? And then we repeat. So the next thing is the highest power of two that is less than 109 is 64. That's two power six. So we said the seventh digit to be one in binary, one, one, and then six zeros to the right of that now. So now we subtract 64, two power six, 64 from 109, and we are left with 45. Good, so now we do the same operation again. The highest power of two that is less than 45 is 32. That's two power five. So we said the six digit to be one in binary, and that's three ones, and then five zeros after that, right? And that's the number we've got now. You can see right now, so that, that number right now that we have three ones and then six zeros, or sorry, three ones and then five zeros, that's 224, right? Um, but we, we want 237, so we still have to add 13 to that number, right? Or represent 13 more. So unsurprisingly, we take 13, we find the highest power that is lower than that, that's two power three, which is eight. So we said the fourth digit, two power three, fourth digit to be one in binary. So now we have one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero, zero. We subtract eight from 13, we're left with five. The highest power of two that is less than five is four, that's two power two. So we said the third digit to be one in binary. We subtract four from five, we're left with one. And one's easy because it's the first digit, we know that. So we said the first digit to be one and we have our final result. So 237 in binary is one, 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 zero, one, one, zero, one. We can double check this by adding all the powers together. So this is what I was telling you. So this is the conversion the other way. So, you know, 128 plus 64 plus 32, there's, there's no 16. So then we go to plus eight plus four. There's no two. So then we go to plus one. We add all those together and that turns out to be 237, which is the number that we wanted. So I wanted to give you a little exercise because with this particular thing, it takes a little bit of getting used to, you know what I mean? So, um, you can pause the video and um, here's a bunch of numbers and I'd like you to convert them into binary. And in the next episode, we'll have the results as the first thing um, so that you can kind of make sure that you got it right. Um, if, you know, if you don't want to wait for the next video, um, you, you can also just go online and convert, you know, say like type in Google like 646 in binary or something like that. And you'll find a converter or something to help you convert. But yeah, I mean, basically you should write down with a piece of paper and try to do this whole math, right? Like go back to the, the, the part of the video that has the powers of two or, or find a power of two table online uh, and then just find, you know, the powers of two that is less than the number and then set the, the one to the right position and so on and then try to figure out like what is that number in binary. Um, and this is a good exercise to do until you feel confident that you can do it. And, and it's a good skill to have as a programmer. So, um, so that's binary, and that's how computers store numbers, as you can see. Uh, the next lesson is going to go over how to add two binary numbers, and this will come in handy later as well. If you enjoyed watching this, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel below and like this video. You can also like us on Facebook and get alerted as soon as a new episode comes out.